Deep in the unforgiving wilderness, a man left for dead by his comrades embarks on a relentless quest for vengeance. In tonight's sleep story, we plunge into this harrowing mystery filled with horror and suspense. Will you stay with us as the dark tale of Hugh Glass unfolds? The forest was a living thing. It breathed, it whispered, and it watched. Hugh Glass, with his seasoned eyes, had always felt at home amidst its sprawling arms. But today, the woods felt different. The air was thick, almost suffocating, and the usual chirping of birds was replaced by an eerie silence. Glass moved cautiously, his boots barely making a sound on the moss-covered ground. Every so often, he'd pause, his ears straining for any hint of danger. He was a seasoned trapper, and his instincts had saved him more times than he could count. But today, those instincts were screaming at him, telling him that something was amiss. He reached a clearing, the sunlight filtering through the dense canopy above, casting dappled shadows on the ground. It was here that he decided to set his trap, hoping to catch a deer or maybe even a fox. As he bent down, Working with practiced hands, a rustling sound caught his attention. Glass froze. The rustling grew louder, more insistent. It wasn't the soft tread of a deer or the skittish scamper of a fox. This was something bigger, something more menacing. Before he could react, a massive force slammed into him from behind, sending him sprawling to the ground. The world became a blur of pain and confusion. Glass could feel the weight of the creature on top of him, its hot breath on his neck, its claws digging into his flesh. He fought back with all his might, but the beast was relentless. Every time he managed to get an arm free, it was pinned back down, every scream muffled by the creature's massive body. It was a grizzly bear, its eyes wild with rage. Glass could see every detail of its face, from the froth at the corners of its mouth to the scars that crisscrossed its snout. The bear's jaws snapped inches from Glass's face, its teeth gleaming in the dappled sunlight. Time seemed to stretch and warp. Every second felt like an eternity as Glass fought for his life. He managed to grab a knife from his belt, plunging it into the bear's side. The creature roared in pain, but it only seemed to enrage it further. The world turned red. Glass's vision blurred, the pain becoming almost unbearable. But amidst the chaos, a single thought kept him going. Survival. With one last surge of strength, he managed to push the bear off, rolling away and scrambling to his feet. The bear, bleeding and disoriented, took a moment to regain its bearings. Glass didn't wait. He ran, his heart pounding in his chest, the sounds of the bear's roars echoing in his ears. He didn't stop until he reached the safety of a nearby ridge, collapsing to the ground, his body aching and his mind reeling from the sheer unexpectedness of the assault. The sun was setting, casting long, eerie shadows across the forest floor. The once vibrant colors of the day were now muted, replaced by the cold blue hue of twilight. In a small clearing, Three men stood around the battered and bloody form of Hugh Glass, their faces a mix of concern, fear, and something darker. Fitzgerald, the tallest of the trio, looked down at Glass with a sneer. Look at him, he spat, his voice dripping with disdain. Barely breathing. Ain't no way he's making it out of this forest alive. Bridger, a younger man with a mop of curly hair, shifted uncomfortably. We can't just leave him here, Fitz. It ain't right. Fitzgerald's eyes, cold and calculating, fixed on Bridger. You think I give a damn about what's right? We've got a job to do, and he's dead weight. The third man, a wiry individual named Hawkins, cleared his throat. Maybe we should give him a fighting chance. Leave him some supplies. A weapon, maybe. Fitzgerald laughed, a harsh, grating sound that echoed through the trees. A fighting chance? Look at him. He's as good as dead. He knelt beside Glass, 
his fingers deftly searching through the injured man's pockets, pulling out a small pouch of coins, a knife, and a flask. See? He won't be needing these. Bridger took a step forward, anger flashing in his eyes. You can't just rob him, Fitz. Fitzgerald stood up, towering over Bridger. And who's gonna stop me? You? He took a swig from the flask, wiping his mouth with the back of his hand. We leave him here and we move on. It's that simple. Hawkins, ever the peacemaker, tried to intervene. Maybe we could make a stretcher, carry him with us. Fitzgerald's gaze turned icy. Every minute we waste here is a minute closer to getting caught. We leave at dawn, with or without him. The night was filled with the sounds of the forest, the chirping of crickets, the distant hoot of an owl. But amidst the natural symphony, another sound could be heard, the labored breathing of a man left for dead, betrayed by those he once called friends. Consciousness returned to Hugh Glass in fragments, like shards of broken glass piecing themselves back together. The first thing he registered was the cold. It seeped into his bones, gnawing at him from the inside out. The ground beneath him was hard and unforgiving, each pebble and twig digging into his wounded flesh. His eyes fluttered open, the world around him a blurry haze. Trees loomed overhead, their branches swaying gently in the breeze, their leaves whispering secrets he couldn't comprehend. For a moment, he was disoriented. The memories of the bear attack and the subsequent betrayal by his companions muddled and distant. But as the fog in his mind began to clear, the weight of his situation pressed down on him. He was alone, injured, and stranded in the vast wilderness with no supplies. A wave of despair threatened to engulf him, but he pushed it away. He had survived the bear. He would survive this. He tried to move, but pain lanced through him, a sharp reminder of his injuries. His breathing was ragged, each inhale a struggle. But he couldn't afford to lie there, waiting for death to claim him. He had to move, to find shelter, to find food. Hunger gnawed at his belly, a constant, insistent reminder of his dire situation. He remembered the berries he had seen earlier, the small stream he had crossed. If he could just get to them, maybe he could survive long enough to find his way back to civilization. But every movement was agony. His muscles screamed in protest, his wounds throbbed with pain. But he couldn't give up. He thought of his family, of the life he had left behind. He couldn't let them down. He wouldn't. With sheer determination, he began to crawl, each inch forward a victory. The world around him seemed to close in, the trees becoming menacing figures, the shadows hiding unseen dangers. But he pushed on driven by a will to survive that was stronger than any pain or fear. As night began to fall, the temperature dropped, and the cold became even more biting. He knew he had to find shelter, to build a fire, to keep the darkness at bay. But for now, all he could do was keep moving, keep fighting, keep hoping. Days blurred into nights, and the relentless pain became Glass's only constant companion. Every movement was a symphony of agony, each breath a laborious effort. But the wilderness, with its indifferent beauty, offered no respite. It was a world where only the fittest survived, and Glass was determined to be among them. He found a small cave, its entrance shielded by overhanging branches. It was damp and cold, but it offered some protection from the elements. Here, he began the arduous process of tending to his wounds, with hands that trembled from pain and exhaustion, he tore strips from his already tattered shirt, using them to bind the deep gashes the bear had left behind. The fabric, stained with his blood, clung to his skin, a makeshift bandage that did little to ease his suffering. Water was his first priority. He remembered a stream not too far from where he was. With great effort, he crawled to its banks, each movement sending fresh waves of pain through his body. The water was cold, numbing his hands as he cupped it to his lips. But it was clean, and it brought a momentary relief to his parched throat. Infection was a constant threat. His wounds, left untreated for days, began to fester. Pus oozed from the gashes, and a sickly smell filled the air. Fever dreams haunted his sleep, 
Visions of the bear, of Fitzgerald's sneering face, of his family, their faces twisted in grief. Using a sharp stone, he tried to clean the wounds, gritting his teeth against the pain. He remembered a plant, its leaves known for their antiseptic properties. With blurry vision and unsteady hands, he crushed the leaves into a paste, applying it to his wounds. It burned, a searing pain that made him gasp, but he welcomed it, hoping it meant the infection was being fought off. Days turned into nights and back into days. Time lost all meaning. His world was reduced to the cave, the pain, and the overwhelming desire to survive. He would drift in and out of consciousness, the line between reality and delirium becoming increasingly blurred. But through it all, a single thought kept him going. Revenge. The memory of Fitzgerald's betrayal, the cold, calculating look in his eyes, fueled Glass's determination. He would survive. He would heal. And he would have his revenge. The settlement was a smattering of wooden structures, smoke curling up from chimneys into the gray sky. It was a place of refuge for those who braved the wilderness, a beacon of civilization amidst the vast expanse of untamed land. Glass, his body still weak and his steps faltering, felt a surge of relief as he approached. The promise of a warm bed and a hot meal was tantalizing. But as he entered the settlement, he felt the weight of curious eyes on him. Whispers spread like wildfire, the townsfolk exchanging glances, their expressions a mix of pity and morbid fascination. Glass's appearance was ghastly, his face gaunt, his clothes tattered, and his wounds still fresh. He made his way to the local tavern, the wooden sign creaking in the wind. Inside, the atmosphere was thick with the smell of tobacco and stale beer. Men sat huddled at tables, their voices low, their faces illuminated by the dim glow of lanterns. Glass took a seat at the bar, ordering a drink to soothe his parched throat. As he sipped, he couldn't help but overhear the conversations around him. And it wasn't long before he heard the names that had haunted his every waking moment. Bridger and Fitzgerald. Left him for dead, they did, an old man was saying, his voice raspy from years of smoking. Heard it straight from Fitzgerald's mouth. Said the bear got him good. A younger man, his face covered in a scruffy beard, chimed in. Bridger was boasting about it too. Said they took all his supplies, even his boots. Left him out there with nothing. Glass's grip on his glass tightened, his knuckles white. Every word was a dagger, twisting deeper into his heart. The betrayal, the sheer audacity of their actions, was laid bare for all to hear. A woman, her face lined with age, shook her head. It's a cruel world out there, but to leave a man to die, especially after such a brutal attack, it's inhuman. The bartender, a burly man with a bald head, looked over at Glass, his eyes filled with sympathy. You're him, ain't you? The one they left behind. Glass nodded, his voice barely above a whisper. I am. The tavern fell silent, the weight of the revelation hanging in the air. Glass felt a mix of emotions, anger, sadness, and a burning desire for revenge. But for now, he kept his thoughts to himself, letting the whispers of the settlement fuel his resolve. The room was dim, lit only by a single flickering candle. Its flame cast long dancing shadows on the walls, creating an atmosphere thick with anticipation. In the center of the room, a table was strewn with an array of tools and weapons. Glass sat there, his focus unwavering, his hands steady despite the storm of emotions raging within him. He picked up a knife, its blade dulled from use and time. With a whetstone, he began to sharpen it, each stroke deliberate and precise. The rhythmic scraping was almost hypnotic, a meditation that allowed him to channel his rage and hone his focus. Every swipe of the stone was a promise, a vow of retribution. Beside the knife lay a small crossbow, its wood worn but sturdy. Glass inspected it, ensuring the mechanism was smooth and the string taut. He imagined the bolt flying true, finding its mark, delivering justice. On the floor, a satchel lay open, revealing its contents, dried meat, a flask of water, a map, and a compass. These were the essentials, 
the tools of survival. But Glass knew that more than supplies, he needed a plan, a strategy to track down those who had wronged him. He closed his eyes, taking a deep breath. He visualized the terrain, the paths Bridger and Fitzgerald might have taken, the places they might be hiding. He saw himself moving silently through the forest, a shadowy avenger, always one step ahead. But more than the physical preparations, Glass knew he needed to steal his mind. The journey ahead would be fraught with danger, both from the elements and from the men he sought. He couldn't afford to be reckless or impulsive. Every move had to be calculated, every decision weighed. He thought of the bear, of the raw power and fury it had unleashed upon him. He remembered the pain, the fear, the desperation, but he also remembered the will to survive, the determination to fight back, to endure. That same fire now burned within him, a flame that would not be extinguished until justice was served. With his weapons sharpened and his supplies gathered, Glass stood up, his silhouette framed by the candle's glow. The weight of his mission pressed down on him, but he was ready. The hunt was about to begin. The tavern's door groaned on its hinges as Glass pushed it open, the sound echoing like a mournful wail. Inside, a haze of tobacco smoke hung in the air, blurring the dim light from the lanterns. The patrons, a motley crew of trappers, hunters, and drifters, barely looked up from their drinks, their faces etched with the weariness of hard lives. But Glass's entrance was not unnoticed. There was a palpable shift in the atmosphere, a tightening of the air, as if the room itself was holding its breath. His reputation, the tales of his survival and thirst for vengeance, had preceded him. He moved with a predator's grace, his eyes scanning the room, searching for his quarry. And then he saw him. Bridger, hunched over a table in the corner, a mug of ale in his hand, his face obscured by a curtain of greasy hair. Glass approached, each step deliberate, the wooden floorboards creaking under his weight. The murmurs in the tavern grew quieter, the tension building, thick and suffocating. Bridger looked up, his eyes widening in recognition and then narrowing in defiance. Glass, he rasped, his voice barely above a whisper. Glass didn't respond immediately. He simply stood there, his silhouette framed by the dim light, letting the weight of the moment press down on Bridger. The younger man's bravado began to waver, replaced by a flicker of fear. The tavern's patrons watched with bated breath, sensing the storm that was about to erupt. Conversations ceased, mugs were set down, and all eyes were fixed on the two men. Finally, Glass spoke, his voice low and dripping with menace. Bridger! The single word hung in the air, heavy with meaning and unspoken threats. Bridger swallowed hard, his Adam's apple bobbing, but he held Glass's gaze, trying to mask his fear. The standoff continued, the silence punctuated only by the crackling of the fireplace and the distant howl of the wind outside. It was a dance of wills, a test of metal, and everyone in the room knew that the climax was imminent. The tension in the room was palpable, a living entity that seemed to wrap its fingers around the throats of every patron in the tavern. Glass's gaze never wavered from Bridger, and the younger man, sensing the impending doom, began to shift uncomfortably in his seat. Without warning, Glass lunged, his hand snaking out to grab Bridger by the collar, pulling him close until their faces were mere inches apart. The sudden movement caused a few patrons to jump, chairs scraping against the wooden floor, but no one dared intervene. You left me, Glass hissed, his voice a venomous whisper. You left me to die. Bridger tried to pull away, but Glass's grip was ironclad. It was Fitzgerald's idea, he stammered, desperation evident in his eyes. He said you were as good as dead. Glass's response was a cold smile, one that didn't reach his eyes. And yet, here I am. With a swift movement, Glass dragged Bridger to the center of the room, throwing him to the ground. The younger man tried to scramble away, but Glass was on him in an instant, pinning him down. The patrons watched in horrified fascination, the grim reality of the situation dawning on them. This wasn't just a confrontation, it was an execution. Glass produced a knife, 
its blade glinting ominously in the dim light. He held it up for Bridger to see, letting the anticipation build. You remember this? He asked, his voice dripping with malice. It's the one you left me with. Thought it might come in handy. Bridger's eyes widened in terror, his breath coming in ragged gasps. Please, he begged, tears streaming down his face. Please don't. But Glass was beyond reasoning. With methodical precision, he began his work, ensuring that Bridger felt every cut, every slice. The younger man's screams echoed through the tavern, a chilling reminder of the price of betrayal. It felt like an eternity before it was over. Glass, his face splattered with blood, stood up, looking down at the lifeless form of Bridger. The message was clear. Vengeance had been served. The tavern was silent, the patrons too shocked to move or speak. Glass, his mission only half complete, turned on his heel and walked out, leaving behind a scene of carnage that would be talked about for years to come. The wilderness was a vast, sprawling entity, its secrets hidden beneath layers of foliage and shadow. But to Glass, it was an open book, each rustling leaf and broken twig telling a story. And the story they told now was one of desperation and fear. Fitzgerald had left a trail, albeit a faint one. It was clear he knew he was being hunted, his path erratic, often doubling back on itself. But Glass was patient, his senses honed to a razor's edge. He could smell the lingering scent of Fitzgerald's campfire, hear the distant snap of a twig under his boot. But Fitzgerald was cunning. More than once, Glass found himself narrowly avoiding a trap. A snare hidden beneath a layer of leaves, a pitfall camouflaged with branches and dirt. It was a deadly game of cat and mouse, and Glass knew that one misstep could cost him his life. Nights were the hardest. The forest came alive with sounds, each one a potential threat. Glass would find a secluded spot to rest, his back against a tree, his senses always alert. Sleep was fleeting, filled with nightmares of the bear, of Bridger's final moments, of the looming confrontation with Fitzgerald. Days turned into nights and back into days. The trail grew colder, then hot again. Glass could feel it in his bones. He was getting closer. He came across a hastily abandoned campsite, the embers of a fire still smoldering. A piece of cloth, torn from Fitzgerald's shirt, caught on a thorny bush. And then, a breakthrough. A local trapper, his face weathered from years in the wilderness, claimed to have seen Fitzgerald just a day prior, heading north towards the mountains. Glass thanked the man, his resolve strengthened. The end was near. But as he ventured deeper into the forest, the terrain became more treacherous. Steep cliffs, dense thickets, and rushing rivers stood in his way. Fitzgerald's traps became more frequent, more deadly. It was clear he was desperate, willing to do anything to escape Glass's relentless pursuit. Through it all, Glass remained undeterred. The memories of the betrayal, the pain, the hunger, and the cold fueled his determination. He would not be denied. Fitzgerald would pay for his treachery, and Glass would be the one to collect the debt. Nestled deep within the heart of the forest, where the trees grew so thick that they blotted out the sun, stood a cabin. It was a relic from a bygone era, its wooden walls weathered and gray, its roof sagging under the weight of moss and decay. The windows, once clear and inviting, were now clouded with grime, hiding the secrets within. The forest around the cabin was eerily silent, as if nature itself was holding its breath in anticipation. The only sound was the soft whisper of the wind through the trees, carrying with it the scent of pine and damp earth. Glass approached the cabin with caution, every sense on high alert. He could feel the weight of the building's history, the stories it held, the memories etched into its walls. But more than that, he could feel the presence of Fitzgerald, his nemesis, the man he had tracked across miles of unforgiving wilderness. The door to the cabin was slightly ajar, creaking softly with every gust of wind. Glass paused, listening intently. There was no sound from within, no hint of movement, but he knew better than to let his guard down. Fitzgerald was cunning, 
and the cabin was the perfect place for an ambush. Circling the building, Glass took in every detail. The back of the cabin was bordered by a steep cliff, the drop lethal. On one side, a dense thicket of thorns and brambles made passage nearly impossible. The only viable entrance was the front door. As he neared the window, he peered inside, trying to catch a glimpse of what awaited him. The interior was dim, lit only by the dying embers of a fireplace. Shadows danced on the walls, creating a tapestry of darkness and light. But of Fitzgerald, there was no sign. Glass took a deep breath, steeling himself for the confrontation ahead. This was it, the culmination of his journey, the moment he had been waiting for. The cabin, with its creaking timbers and whispered secrets, was the stage, and the final act was about to begin. The door groaned as Glass pushed it open, the sound echoing through the silent cabin. The room was dim, the only light coming from the dying embers in the fireplace. Shadows clung to the corners, hiding the room's secrets. Glass stepped inside, every muscle tensed, ready for the inevitable confrontation. The air was thick with tension, charged with electricity. And then, from the shadows, Fitzgerald emerged. Their eyes locked, two predators sizing each other up. There was no need for words. Their intentions were clear. This was a battle to the death, and only one would walk away. With a roar, Fitzgerald lunged, a knife gleaming in his hand. Glass dodged, narrowly avoiding the blade, and retaliated with a punch that sent Fitzgerald stumbling back. The two men circled each other, their movements calculated, each waiting for the other to make a mistake. The room became a whirlwind of violence, punches thrown, knives flashing. The sound of grunts and the thud of bodies hitting the floor filled the air. The fight was brutal, neither man giving an inch, both fueled by rage and desperation. Glass managed to disarm Fitzgerald, sending the knife skittering across the floor. But Fitzgerald was relentless, using his fists and sheer brute strength to overpower Glass. They grappled, their bodies slick with sweat, each trying to gain the upper hand. But Glass had the advantage of surprise. With a swift move, he managed to pin Fitzgerald to the ground, his hands wrapped around the other man's throat. Fitzgerald's eyes bulged, his face turning a shade of purple, but he refused to give in, his fingers clawing at Glass's hands, trying to break free. The two men rolled, crashing into furniture, shattering the silence of the cabin. The fight seemed to go on forever, each man pushing the other to the limit, neither willing to admit defeat. Finally, with one last surge of strength, Glass managed to gain the upper hand. He pinned Fitzgerald to the ground, his knee pressing into the other man's chest, cutting off his air supply. Fitzgerald's struggles grew weaker, his eyes filled with fear and desperation. Glass leaned in close, his breath hot on Fitzgerald's face. This is for everything, he whispered, his voice filled with rage. With one final brutal move, Glass ended the fight, leaving Fitzgerald lifeless on the cabin floor. He stood, panting, his body aching, the weight of what he had done pressing down on him. The battle was over, but the war within him raged on. The cabin was silent once more, save for the soft crackling of the fireplace. Glass stood over Fitzgerald's lifeless body, his chest heaving, the adrenaline still coursing through his veins. The room was a testament to their brutal confrontation. Furniture overturned, shards of broken glass glittering on the floor. But as the initial rush of victory began to fade, the weight of his actions pressed down on glass. He looked at his hands, stained with Fitzgerald's blood, and was suddenly transported back to that fateful day, the day the bear had attacked. The parallels were uncanny. Just as the bear had been a force of nature, driven by instinct and survival, so too had Glass become a force to be reckoned with, driven by revenge and rage. The roles had been reversed. Once the prey, he had become the predator. He stepped outside, the cool forest air a stark contrast to the stifling atmosphere of the cabin. The vast wilderness stretched out before him, its beauty and indifference a stark reminder of the fragility of life. As he stood there, the memories of his journey came flooding back. The pain, 
the betrayal, the hunger, the cold, but also the moments of hope, of determination, of sheer willpower. It had been a journey of self-discovery, of coming face to face with his darkest demons and emerging victorious. But at what cost? The weight of his actions, the lives he had taken in his quest for revenge, settled heavily on his shoulders. He realized that while he may have achieved his goal, he had lost a part of himself in the process. The forest, with its towering trees and whispering winds, seemed to echo his thoughts. The past could not be changed, but the future was still unwritten. Glass knew he had a choice to make. He could continue down this path of violence and vengeance, or he could seek redemption, find a way to make amends for his actions. As he stood there, the vast wilderness stretching out before him, he made his decision. He would leave the past behind, seek a new beginning, and find a way to heal, both physically and mentally. With one last look at the cabin, a symbol of his past, he turned and walked away the echoes of his journey fading into the distance. As our story comes to a close, let the lull of this soothing ambiance continue to cradle you further into your journey of calmness and rest. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of your relaxation and sleep routine tonight. Remember, each day brings a new story, and each night brings a fresh chance to regenerate, to dream, and to become more of who you are. Good night, dear listener. Until our next story, sleep well and dream beautifully.